bit by bit, I'm going to show images of multiple sclerosis. And when you see an MRI of the brain with white matter lesions, it is important to distinguish lesions at locations typical for multiple sclerosis from a specific white matter lesions. The typical locations for multiple sclerosis are periventricular, corpus callosum, juxtacortical, infratentorial, and in the spinal cord. I'm not going to show spinal cord lesions because this is brain bit by bit. This is a flare image of a patient with multiple sclerosis and lesions periventricular and in the corpus callosum and a lesion with a perivenular orientation that enhances on the post-contrast T1 weighted image. Juxtacortical is a difficult term for some people, but it means next to the cortex, so not in the region of the cortex, not subcortical, but really at the gray-white matter boundary, involving the U fibers. And this is also a typical location for multiple sclerosis. The infratentorial region lesions are often seen in brachium pantis and in the cerebellar white matter. In multiple sclerosis, there is breakdown of myelin that is formed by oligodendrocytes. And I've already talked about the oligodendrocytes in the previous vlogs about progressive multifocal leg encephalopathy and Mache in epilepsy. And I've shown this image of an electron microscope with a scale of a quarter of a micron, where you can see how the oligodendrocyte has wrapped the myelin around the exon. And I've also talked about oligodendrocyte precursor cells from which the oligodendrocytes are derived in PVL in preterm infants in one of the first vlogs. When you look at the histology of an active demyelinating multiple sclerosis lesion that has been stained for myelin basic protein, so for myelin, you can see that in the region of demyelination, there is lack of myelin. It's a very pale area here. And this is a matched image that has been stained for CD68, where you can see that there are a lot of macrophages and microglial cells in the region of demyelination. In multiple sclerosis, the axons are relatively preserved compared to other inflammatory white matter diseases. So it's mainly loss and destruction of the oligodendrocytes. And this is an electron microscopic image of a demyelinating axon in an article where they were looking for a target for remyelination in hippocampal slices with demyelination in a model for multiple sclerosis and this is a remyelinated exon. And the remyelination is done by oligodendrocyte precursor cells. And I want to talk a little bit more about these oligodendrocyte precursor cells. During embryology they arise and migrate in three different waves. The first wave comes from the medial ganglionic eminence, the second one from the lateral ganglionic eminence, and the last wave at postpartum day zero migrates from the subventricular zone. The oligodendrocyte precursor cells migrate along the vasculature. So they adhere to the adluminal side of the endothelial and they migrate along the vessel. And sometimes they have a very long leading process that remains in contact with the vessel. And if you see this image, you can imagine an analogy with the radial glial cell and the neuron. So probably the OPC is fed by these endothelial cells in the vessel. So that's why it has to remain in contact. 
and OPCs remain during life and they can go to areas of demyelination to remyelinate and give rise to new oligodendrocytes. And during life they also migrate along vessels. OPCs can detach with an interaction with astrocyte and feet and an astrocyte is a cell that we haven't talked about before but that's also on the website in the glymphatic section because astrocytes are very abundant glial cells that have end feet surrounding the endothelial of the vessel and form the blood brain barrier and I really like this model of the interaction between the OPCs and the astrocyte end feet because there is this theory that if there is clustering of OPCs that are unable to detach on the vessel wall there's no more place for the astrocyte end feet and then there's a hole in the blood brain barrier which is pro-inflammatory and prone for demyelination in MS. So there is an interaction between the OPCs and the astrocytes. There's also triggering of microglial cells by OPC, which also plays a role in the pathogenesis of MS. And I'm not going to discuss the wind signaling in detail, but OPCs also influence wind signaling pathways in the extracellular space that also plays a role in multiple sclerosis. And the reason that I like this vessel occupied by OPCs leading to a hole in the astrocyte and feet blood brain barrier so much is that this vascular story serves as a mnemonic for me why the the multiple sclerosis lesions are periventricular in the corpus callosum and juxtacortical. Because near the cortex and near the ventricle, the small blood vessels do not have so many side branches. And maybe there are also different shearing forces and endothelial molecules that come to expression. So there are it's a little bit different environment and a little bit different microanatomy where the OPCs accumulate in the vessels and lead to the multiple sclerosis demyelination. To make a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis, you do not only need the periventricular corpus callosum, juxtacortical and infratentorial locations, but you also need to demonstrate dissemination in space and time. And to demonstrate dissemination in time, you can administer gadolinium. And in multiple sclerosis, the active lesions enhance Sometimes it's nodular and sometimes it's an open ring enhancement where the ring is open towards the cortex. So the enhancing part is towards the white matter. So it's the front of demyelination. It has been described that pre-existing lesions in multiple sclerosis can enhance again. And this is thought to be caused by second waves of macrophages and microglial cells that migrate into the lesion again. So it's a second wave of inflammation and a reactivation of the multiple sclerosis plaque. The most important differential diagnosis in multiple sclerosis are neuromyelitis optica with sometimes acroporin-4 antibodies located in the astrocyte and feet and MOG antibodies and another differential diagnosis is ADEM and we're going to talk about 